Hey everyone, I'm sitting inside a 2011 Toyota Tundra. It's one of the second gen Toyota Tundras, and you might notice uh, on a lot of these trucks they have a set of blanks here off to the side of the gauges. Sometimes there's just a sonar button here or just a setup button. Now, what would be here is an info button and a select reset button. It'd be a switch that looked more like this. Now, if you just have a blank like this truck does, you can actually add the other buttons on here, and surprisingly, in a lot of trucks it works. In actually almost all of the trucks it works. Some of the trucks, though, there's more work to do than others. Sometimes you'll plug this in, and it will just work, and then other times you might not get so lucky because sometimes the wires, some of the wires that are needed are missing. So I'm going to pop this off and we'll get a look and see what this truck has and uh, go from there. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick this up on my camera, but one thing you want to check when you're getting started here is to make sure that this display here has the extra functions available to it. Almost all of them will, but from what I understand, after doing a bit of reading online, is that there is some very base models of Tundras where this display doesn't have any capabilities beyond the clock. So what you can do is, the other displays are going to be over here on this side, where it's going to have like range and stuff like that and you can see those if you look really closely in here and sometimes shining a flashlight on there might help. Now I can see that this truck has it. I don't think that you can see it on the camera but when you shine a flashlight in there you will be able to see those extra bits. What you're looking for is um, on the far side over here it'll say instant and average. Up on the top up there it's going to say range and over here you'll see things like MPG, C and F off to the uh, right side. Now to get this piece off you don't actually have to do very much special. You can basically pop it out with your fingers most of the time. Um, if you just kind of muscle it around a little bit it'll it'll pop out of there. There we go. See. And you'll see as I pulled that out, there's this kind of dummy plug just sitting in here that was plugged into the back of this. Now, let's see if I can get you a look at this. Now you'll notice on this plug that there's six wires here. There are two wires that would be here, but they're missing on this truck. Now, if you have all eight wires, you could probably plug this switch in and there's a decent chance that it may just work. If you have, especially if you have one of the 2011, 2012, or 2013 uh, second gens, it's very likely that if you have all eight wires that it's going to work. It may not though, because this connect, these sets, these wires here, they go to another connector that's back behind here, and that connector then attaches to the gauge cluster. Now, it's possible that even if you have all the wires here, sure you might have the wires going from here to that connector, but that sub connector that then goes to the gauge cluster, that may be missing the wires. So it can be hard to know exactly what you're going to need, but if you have all eight wires, you can plug it in and see if it'll work. If you have six wires like this, then we're definitely going to be removing this uh, trim panel here around the gauge cluster to see how far back we're going to need to go. We may not, we may just be able to wire to the sub connector, or we may need to wire all the way back to the gauge cluster. So I've gone ahead and I've removed the negative battery cable. Um, always a good idea when you're pulling electronic stuff apart in your car. And I'm going to now start removing this bezel. I've left this plastic piece off because this actually gives a really good place to grab on and start to pull this off. There's no screws or anything on this. It's just all popped in there. So we can pop it all out and then we'll have to remove the wires off various things that are uh, 
that are attached to it. But um, we'll get to that in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab it in here and pull outwards and it will pop off like that. And then once it's off there like that, we can start working our way across it. You can grab onto these and just kind of pull it. And it'll keep popping like that. And there we go. So it's all pretty loose. So now that that upper part is loose, we're gonna be removing this lower panel, which the top of it is just clipped on and the bottom is held on by 10 millimeter uh, bolts here. If you pull this aside, you'll see one of them is here and another one located right there. Okay, now that we have this dropped down, we can now get to what we wanted to see. And that's this connector right here. These are the wires that come up from the uh, side of the cluster bezel. And this is called uh, JL1, I think, in the if you check the prints for this car. Now, what we're looking for is pins 17 and 19. They'd be on this side of the connector. And you notice that there are four wires that are missing here. And two of them are 17 and 19, which of course I don't have, because we've already seen that they don't come from the switch. So those are the wires that I need to add. But I also need to know, do I have the wires coming from the other side going back? Because these wires go up into back here and they connect to the back of the gauge cluster. And if we have to remove that, we have a lot more work to do here. So I'm hoping that I have the wires. Now, 17 and 19 are on this side. Um, this white wire at the bottom is 12, and the purplish color at the top up here is 22. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out and see if and yes, I have, I don't even need to count them, I have all the wires on that side that correspond to it. So, this truck is good to go as soon as I add in these other wires on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple wires and we're going to get that done. So I'm going ahead and getting these wires running here. So I added this red wire here, it's like a 22 gauge. Uh, at first I just stripped the end a good bit and shoved it all the way into there, but it felt too loose to me. So I folded the wire over and then shoved it in there and it went in there a little bit better. I went in, I pushed it in until I actually saw the metal come out of the other side of the connector here. So hopefully that'll give me a good connection. Alternatively, people have pointed out that you can reuse the wires in here online if you don't have the sonar button. Uh, which would be down here If you have sonar that'd be this bottom blank this truck doesn't have sonar though, so I don't have to worry about it So what I could do is these two wires on the top this blue and purple one that are in pin 7 and 8 Those are for the sonar button so you could pull those out of the pin and move them down here or whatever You could also just buy this harness from Toyota uh, as you know a complete thing and just replace the whole thing that has all eight wires in it or get one out of a junkyard something like that if that's the way uh, you wanted to go but I'm just gonna go ahead and push some wires in here to get this going today so in the pin numbers that they wire into so I wired this red one into pin 3 so pin 3 goes to 19 and pin 2 goes to pin 17 down there so it's, it's kind of a numerical order, right? So 2 goes to 17, 3 goes to 19. Alright, so I've got both the wires in there going to the connector where they need to. Show you underneath here too. Just kind of routed them under here. They're just loose here for now because I want to make sure it's going to work first. Now when I plug that connector onto here, I'm gonna keep this out and hold onto these back two wires to make sure they're not pushed out or anything. 
uh, by it as it's going on there, you know, because it is going to put some pressure on that wire from this side. Yeah, I definitely felt it trying to push them out a little bit there. Alright, so, first try, a bit of disappointment, it didn't work. Uh, the only thing that was working was this little setup button which changes it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I went back in there, I reseated the wires one more time and sure enough now I've got all the other functions of the computer so we've got temperature our average MPG instant MPG and range they're just blank right now because I have to start moving the truck but uh, I'm certain that they will work when I get out on the road here